The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, as the, Lord God, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives whom I serve, during these years there shall be no dew or rain except at my word. The Lord then said to Elijah, leave here, go east and hide in the Wadi Cherith, east of the Jordan. You shall drink of the stream, and I have commanded ravens to feed you there. So he left and did as the Lord had commanded. He went and remained by the Wadi Cherith, east of the Jordan. Ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the stream. The word of the Lord. Our help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I lift up my eyes toward the mountains. Whence shall help come to me? My help is from the Lord who made heaven and earth. May he not suffer your foot to slip. May he slumber not who guards you. Indeed, he neither slumbers nor sleeps, the guardian of Israel. The Lord is your guardian, the Lord is your shade. He is beside you at your right hand. The sun shall not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will guard you from all evil. He will guard your life. The Lord will guard your coming and your going, both now and forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad. 
for your reward will be great in heaven. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad for your reward will be great in heaven. <coughs> Thus they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. We hear once again the, be the paradoxes that are in the Beatitudes. So today we will talk about the setting the context for this particular Sermon on the Mount, the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, and how the, in this setting it reminds us of Moses. And then we will talk about the literal translation for the word beatitude in the Greek and how it means happy. Okay, so it's S, H, and then lastly, how these paradoxes are to be realized in this life, ultimately in the passion of our Lord. So SHP, sort of like ship. Now, regarding the context or the setting, you recalled in the Old Testament when Moses on Mount Sinai came down, he came down to the people with the commandments, the two tablets of the law, whereas in this case, Jesus, the new Moses, went up the mountain. So there's a sort of a parallel there, whereas in the case of Moses going down speaks of him promising to the people things even in this earthly life. So the Israelites were given, for example, in Deuteronomy, I think it was chapter 28, a list of blessings for being obedient and then a list of curses for being disobedient. So it was still very much, his preaching were very much concerned with the things of this life even, whereas our Lord ascending to the mount to preach the sermon on the mount and then the beginning being the Beatitudes that speaks of heavenly things. I also want to mention very importantly that you think about blessings for being obedient, curses for being disobedient. Christians in this life oftentimes are given great sufferings which appear to be curses even for being obedient and being good and being holy just think about all the saints for example and you who are constantly praying for your friends and family members who are ill or suffering in some capacity it would seem sort of difficult because you're thinking well this person is so good why are they afflicted with so many sorrows and that's the paradox i'm talking about but first we'll move on to the the H for happy. In the Greek, the word translated into English, you can even say happy. So how can we say happy are they who mourn? Happy are they who are 
persecuted and so forth. It would seem sort of contrary to our sense of reason. In fact, non-believers, they hear this and to them it is gibberish. It is inscrutable. Whereas you and I recognize that we are truly only happy if we see this in an eschatological sense. If you live strictly for the things of this life, this will not make any sense. But if we see this as eschatological promises, then things become to begin to take shape and to have meaning. In other words, if you are poor in spirit, for example, it speaks of the fact that you experience a certain spiritual poverty, recognizing that we are utterly dependent upon God for all things. So, left of ourselves, we are utterly destitute. We can only sin. Whereas, with the grace of God, our actions take on value, especially when we recognize our spiritual poverty, and which is humility. And it gives, makes sense of all the other beatitudes. There are eight of them, as you know. And so when it comes to being happy, being happy, for example, as a digression, all the parents out there right now working, cleaning up duty Monday morning after the Baker Street Bash or the festival is the most difficult day because everyone is fatigued and yet you have to go out there and work. And so how can you be happy being on cleanup crew, for example? You are happy insofar as if you see your, all of your actions being rooted in the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord. So what happens on Good Friday and Easter Sunday, the Paschal Mystery, is what gives meaning to these paradoxes. So when you and I undergo difficulties, any of the litany of the Beatitudes, we recognize that it only will yield happiness if we are supernatural, if we are spiritual and not merely carnal. And so the next time you are tempted to murmur or complain about the cross, recognize that the cross is what gives meaning to these words that you've heard echoed this morning. May we go forth this day to offer up the little sorrows and trials of this day, recognizing that when given to our Lord, then we will become blessed. Then we will become truly happy. Knowing that his words lead to eternal life, we turn to our Father in prayer. For all members of the church, may the Holy Spirit help us bear good fruit in our charity and service to others. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who are suffering in any way, we pray for the good health of Diana Salcedo, and Nicholas Monteroso. May God make his presence constantly known to them. Let us pray to the Lord. For the assembly gathered here today, may God strengthen our love for one another and conform us evermore to his heart. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in faith, we pray especially for members of the David family for whom this Mass is being offered, and for Stephen Hillis. May God bring them into his loving presence for all eternity. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, from whom all goodness flows, hear our prayers and the prayers of all your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruits of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you, and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your healing work, O oh Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary. Your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria.